John Candelario, born in 1916, and he died in 1993. He was a native New Mexican, an award-winning photographer, a cinematographer, and in a time where artists were flooding in from away, he was one of the first to show the story of New Mexicans from a New Mexican perspective. Given his family's ties to the various pueblos, he had unprecedented access. He had several different ways of storytelling, including photography, audio, and cinematography. His musical compositions and audio recordings are relatively unknown compared to his other work. During 2020, we were all teleworking and we needed a project during that time. The Library and Archives applied for a Recordings at Risk grant from the Council on Library and Information Resources funded by the Mellon Foundation. Initially, this was going to be their last year of funding, so we only had one opportunity to apply. And over 100 applications were submitted, and ours was one of only 17 that were chosen to be funded. We turned 181 reel-to-reel -reel open tapes. 73 audio cassettes and three LPs into a digitally accessible collection. We did not have any playback equipment prior to the digitization and therefore the recordings were inaccessible to researchers. These carriers are inherently unstable and would have been increasingly at risk as time goes on so that no one would have been able to hear them in the future. After this grant project, we now have hundreds of digitized files that can be heard for the first time in decades. So our basic game plan was to package, ship, have a service provider digitized. They would then return them along with the digital files. We'll upload them to our online platform and create the metadata, such as the types of recordings, who is featured on them, etc. In case you're familiar with Santa Fe and its original curio store, that was started by his grandfather, J.S. Candelario. Originally, the family came from Albuquerque, and the name, the last name was Candelaria, but he decided that he preferred a more masculine version and so changed the spelling of his name. John was the child of J.S.'s only child, and so he was the heir. He was left the curio store upon his grandfather's death. At 22, he dropped out of studying physics in California to return to Santa Fe and inherited the store and his grandfather's millions. The story is that someone pawned a camera at the curio store and that that fateful action started his entire career. He was very well acquainted with Georgia O'Keeffe and the other artists in the Taos area. Allegedly, he sharpened knives for Georgia, and that was his introduction to her and the other Taos artists. He took many of the well-known photos of her, including those of her and the skull taken outside of Ghost Ranch. Through Georgia and her husband, Alfred Steiglitz, John had two one-person shows at MoMA in New York. MoMA then purchased his entire second show prior to it opening, which was the first time they had done that in their history. Through Georgia, John met and befriended many of the other Taos crew, including Katie Wells, Maria Chabot, the Lawrences, and Mabel Dodge Luhan. He was also selected to be the photographer for Mabel Dodge's book, Taos and Its Artists. Thanks to his grandfather making strategic business decisions, which introduced John to the Pueblos in northern New Mexico and Arizona, he had unprecedented access when it came to filming and photography. For example, he was the only non-Native person allowed to record at some of the Gallup intertribal ceremonials. While we legally own the copyright to his recordings, we have restricted the files containing native material while we work through the tribal consultation process. At this time, we will not be sharing clips from the native content. Nearly all of the photos in this slide deck were taken by Candelario, though they're not necessarily related to the audio clips. 
His audio collection is comprised around six different thematic types, native songs and dances, Hispanic songs and other popular music, interviews, lectures, motion picture music and soundtracks, and a good dose of miscellany. Here's one of his field recordings. Right, this is the first of three dance numbers played on the occasion of San Isidro Day by Mr. Medina, Mr. Hernandez, and Blas Chavez Jr. The first number will be announced by Mr. Medina. First number, Las Chapanecas. <laughs> The middle third of the recordings are informal interviews of Potter Margaret Tafoya and her family conducted by Dr. Lawrence and Mary Ellen Blair as research for their book. Well, among our, our people, my people, they say it's never copied anybody um, surfing avenue. You do your face, the, the avenue case different from the one that uh, on the pond. Why well, I asked my mother. She said it's a bad luck if you copy something. Like that. Yeah. You have to do it a little different. Well, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can sure. put the avenue on the pot but make a different looks. Yeah, did you the see head my, part. Did you see my gorgeous mm, drawing? Yeah. yeah. Isn't he beautiful? Mm, that's a beautiful <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> You're mm -hmm. turning out to be an Indian. <laughs> pretty good. Pretty soon I hire you to design my card. Then I'm going to put yeah. you in the book, you're cheating. You lose your reputation. And then this one will say, oh, she's cheating. That's she's right. She's hilarious. That's right. Mean. <laughs> The Blair's archival collection is at the library along with the Candelario collection. I've spoken to both families and looked through the scant paperwork we have, and so far no one knows how or why the Blair tapes are in with Candelarios. They're numbered sequentially with the rest of the archival tapes so that they are intentionally, if mysteriously, included. John had a professional recording studio and released a number of professional albums, including the three listed here. Here is an excerpt of Don Ricardo with Taboo. La última noche que pasé contigo Quisiera olvidarla pero no he podido La última noche que pasé contigo Tengo que olvidarla por mi bien Última noche que pasé contigo, la llevo guardada como fiel testigo de aquellos momentos en que fuiste mía. Hoy quiero olvidarla por mi ser. ¿Por qué te fuiste aquella noche y me dejaste? noche con el recuerdo de tu traición Ay. One of the items in the original inventory was Frida Lawrence reading D.H. Lawrence's love poems. Many of the musical pieces have duplicates and excerpts but we found just a single box labeled Frida. Much to my dismay, when the recordings were returned, the file did not contain poetry. However, we found an unlabeled cassette at the Art Museum's library 
Much to our delight, we also found a second cassette rattling around in an unused desk drawer in the history library, completely separate from the archival collection where it should have been. To top it all off, I've been told that we actually have a motion picture film of the recording in photo archives, and at least some of it has been digitized. So soon we hope to have a digital version of this album. He was an award-winning cinematographer, and for several of his films, he did the original compositions for the soundtracks, including Blue Green, One of the most fun discoveries were those which contribute to the museum's history. You have been listening to Archaeological Reminiscences by Four Old Timers. Will you sign yourselves out, please? I'm Kenneth M. Chapman of the Laboratory of Anthropology. I am F.W. Hodge, director of the Southwest Museum in Los Angeles. I'm Ina Sizer Cassidy, Mrs. Gerald Cassidy of Santa Fe. I'm Jesse L. Nussbaum of the National Park Service and consulting archaeologist of the Department of the Interior. September 9, 1955. There are recordings of some of the founders as well as a host of recordings from lectures given to the docents in the 1980s. One of the lectures was given by pioneering anthropologist and archaeologist Dr. Florence Holly Ellis. No one knew this recording existed, and it was quite fun to find her niece and to share the files with her. In the delightful miscellany category, there are a number of advertisements, Latin masses, flamenco, phone conversations, and what I can only describe as sit and be fit. Stand and stretch his feet apart, tummy in, arms overhead, reach for the ceiling, reach with the right, left, right, left, reach right, left, right, again, reach right, left, right, and up, stretch, up, again, with the right, left, right, left, reach, stretch, arms to the sides, now reach right, two, three, tuck in the middle, and left, two, three, and move the rib cage to the side, tuck in the middle, left, two, three, flat back, bounce down. The URL to explore all of the audio recordings is tinyurl.com forward slash candelario audio. 
John Candelario had a unique and special perspective on New Mexico, which he shared and showed through films, photographs, and sound. The music, stories, families, and songs in this collection convey New Mexico's history in a way that no other medium can. We are so fortunate to be the first in decades to hear and share these voices and include them in history in ways that weren't possible before they were accessible digitally. Here's John with his dog, Cindy, and his Harley Davidson Tarzan, and he'll be closing out the presentation. Okay, fine, and uh, listen the best to you, and you have yourself a good time. <laughs> 